All right, YouTube. So we're leaving the bus station, uh, downtown Jacksonville, and um, put another route in here that's gonna throw us on I-10, I-95 interchange, and then over to the hardware store. So I'm just gonna take a quick record of this, see how it does with the uh, transitions between city streets and highway mode. Uh, shouldn't see any differences between the previous versions, but um, just gonna get out here and throw some video up and see how it does. So this is a very interesting interchange here. Uh, it looks like it's got it mapped perfectly. Uh, up and around, need to take a left here. Doing this visually, it should slow its speeds down a little bit. This is a very, look at all the skid marks on that, uh, that railing there from people hitting that too fast. It's almost going too slow there. It slowed all the way down to 18, but that was great. It didn't overdo that speed. Now we jump up onto the interstate with what needs to be a little bit of an aggressive merge. Looks like it's got a nice gap though. The boost up to the speed limit was good. I really do think we need a flow of traffic setting or some way to manage speed safely because um, there's definitely a, a balance of when I've got my override set to zero it gets itself in some situations that when it was just a, like five over five you know ten percent over it um, it really worked a little bit better helping it get into emerge scenarios lane changes were a little bit easier um, and because it's a variable situation, meaning like, you know, you don't want to always be going five over, but when, when cars are, are traveling around you at high speeds, um, the Tesla needs to live in that environment safely. So I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is. It's a little bit one of those moral dilemmas, I guess you could say. All right, now we're jumping. And look at those speeds, 25 miles an hour. Did you see that? That was not good. Um, I felt it slowing down, then I looked up and saw it said 25 miles an hour max. That, fortunately, there was nobody right behind me and it did not rapidly decelerate, but it, inappropriate speed. I don't know if you can sense the cars going around me like I can, but uh, it never looks the same on video. But you can almost sort of tell with the, the speed they pass when they're right to beam you, what they're thinking, what they mean to say by why are you going so slow. Even though I'm in the far right lane, I'm going uh, 55 and it just slowed down to 50. I can't go that slow here. Um, yeah, so I scroll wheeled it up there just as it tried to go even slower. Did really good right there in that merge lane. Did you see that? In the old code used to really, really weave when those white lines got really far apart in those lanes that merged. It did a good job there. All right, should be taking a lane change here. Between cones, should be jumping over. Perfect, a little bit of a construction zone going on here. So there's a barrier that's been placed here, but the lines are well marked. It shouldn't have any issues with this. 
And then at the end of this, we're gonna be taking a left. So either of these left two lanes will work. The, this is the better lane because after this left, we are gonna be taking a right. So that is a better choice. Quite a visualization here while we're at the stoplight. The, uh, these cranes are re represented as short little uh, semi-trucks. Um, the, uh, the bus that just went by looked like it was a stretch limousine. Cones are still the primary asset for barrels. But if you notice, next to every cone, there's a little occupancy network blob that I think represents the barrel. Um, that's my only guess. I, I see this at every barrel uh, encounter. There's cones, but then you got these little blobs of occupancy network kind of detection showing um, something being there that doesn't have an asset for it. Just getting a little closer look at the uh, actual blinkers. This car in front of me does not have his blinker on and it is not representing a blinker. All right. Green arrow trajectory should be following these lines. It looks like it is nice and smooth. A little deceleration there. The car right behind me as I'm creeping up towards this car. Almost almost an awkward situation that I should be using up more of this space so the cars behind me have more room to get out of the intersection. I was almost a little too conservative there not thinking about the cars behind me. That's just um, experience, right? I don't even know how I would think about programming that. All right, a little bit of a right turn. Should proceed nice and tight, stayed in the right lane without going into the left lane at all. All right, and if it's going to jump into the parking lot, let's see, it looks like it's going all the way up and then into the parking lot at this next intersection. We'll let it, we'll let it do its thing. Should be giving a blinker right about now. There we go. All right. And then an immediate right turn. Looks like it's got it mapped appropriately. So far, so good. It's got the uh, ooh, unexpected stop right there. That was an awkward place to stop. I don't really, parking lots are not part of the stack yet, but it is definitely trying to do this. I just saw some sort of occupancy network here that just disappeared. I don't know if you guys want to scroll. It's just stopped here. Oh, it says navigation is complete. So I, I, was, I was trying to, it looked like it put out a media network in the intersection there, which is why I was uh, taking a look. All right, well, there is our drive to Lowe's from the bus station. Uh, another good drive. Speed felt like the biggest issue. Continuing to stay um, the speed limit, but well below the traffic speed that was flowing. So worth the discussion on, on, uh, on what the right answer for that is. But it feels like we need a little bit of a, a traffic flow awareness kind of a setting. Um, to keep the car as safe as possible. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Have a great day.